Glad you could join us on Business Incorporated, I am BC at Debayo. Today on the program, business leaders advise to work towards accelerating Africa's industrialization. An AFDB president speaks on how Africa can tap more infrastructure funding globally. Plus, PwC hopes to conclude forensic investigation into the affairs of Steinoff International by the end of 2018. Now, let's get the show started with the markets here in Africa, where all the indices are down at intraday, except in Egypt, where the EGX30 is up 0.46%. Nigeria's oil share index is down 0.82% at midday, while South Africa's GSE index has shaved off 2.32% at intraday. Arabi closed down 0.47% on Monday. And it's not any different in the Middle East as the markets are still bleeding at intraday. Saudi Arabia's stock market stalled in early trade ahead of a decision by index compiler FTSE Russell on whether to upgrade Riyadh to emerging market status while other regional bourses were mixed. The Saudi index was 0.73% lower at 7,884.26 with leading blue chips still heavily traded ahead of the FTSE decision, which comes tonight. In Dubai, the main index eased 0.07%, while the Abu Dhabi stock index was 1.33% down as blue chip Danogas retreated 3.3% after a big rise a few days ago. Carter's index fell 1.62%, and that's because of a 1.2% loss by industries Carter and 1.0% decline by Qatar International Islamic Bank, which went ex-dividend on Tuesday. And in the U.S. now, the futures are pointing to a lower open on Wednesday. And looking at the benchmark now, the Dow Jones Industrial Average Futures eased 1.42% to 23,857 .71, while the S&P 500 futures declined 1.73% to 2,612.62. NASDAQ 100 futures lost 3.93% to 7,008.81. And in Asia, the stocks closed low on Wednesday after U.S. stocks fell sharply on the back of the clients in technology names. In Tokyo, the Nikkei 225 fell 1.34% to close at 21,031.31 Carrying steeper losses of more than 2% seen earlier. Over in Seoul, the benchmark cost base slid 1.34% to finish at 2,419.29. Hong Kong's Hanseng Index lost 1.7%, with the tech sector the biggest loser. On the mainland, the Shanghai Composites declined 1.4% to end at 3,122.22, with the index closing lower once more after breaking a four-day losing streak in the last session, the Shenzhen Composite edged down 0.95%, ending at 1,812.36. Down under, the S&P ASX 200 edged down 0.73% at 5,789.5, as all but two of its sub-index uh, indexes traded lower. Away from the markets now, as Malawi struggles to contain the spread of the fall armyworm, various organizations are working with farmers to find cheaper and effective interventions to help deal with the pest. Malawi declared the armyworms a national disaster in December after it was discovered that they had spread to 22 of Malawi's 28 districts. Last year, the pest also infested crops in Zambia, Zimbabwe and South Africa. A worsening pest infestation is threatening Malawi's staple maize crop for the second year running, leaving farmers in Chikwawa, southeast of the economic hub of Blanta, in a futile struggle to save a faltering crop. The outbreak of crop munching four army worms, a pest from Latin America that first threatened African crops late in 2016, has been exacerbated by an ongoing dry spell. Barton Mapepa, a farmer, says his family now relies on sweet potato to supplement its food supply. After trying out various methods to get rid of the moths with no success, the 50-year-old has now turned to pheromone traps, which carry the scent of female moths and lure males to their death. 
The agricultural extension workers assured us that these pheromone beta traps will help us attract and trap male moths and help reduce the rate of reproduction among female moths because it kills male moths. Although farmers in Malawi are already using the pesticides against the pest, researchers are also exploring other techniques. Impoverished Malawi is periodically hit by food shortages as it relies heavily on rain-fed agriculture and most of its maize is grown on small plots by subsistence farmers. Official estimates of the damage to maize by both the drought and armyworms are underway. The government says official estimates of the damage to maize by both the drought and armyworms are underway. Last year, half of Malawi's maize was infected by armyworms. These army worms have destroyed my two hectare maize fields. I tried to apply chemicals that I bought, but nothing tangible has been achieved so far. Sadly, I have spent a lot of money all for nothing, and I cannot harvest anything this year. Malawi declared the army worms a national disaster in December after it was discovered that they had spread to 22 of Malawi's 28 districts. In 2017, the pest infestation also affected Zambia, Zimbabwe and South Africa. Experts say the army worm has grown resistant to chemical pesticides over time and high temperatures helped it multiply fast. Margaret Nsoma, another farmer, is spraying her maize crop with a solution made from crushed neem leaves in the meantime. There is a huge difference to my crop because when I apply the crushed neem leaves, I am able to reduce the spread of these worms. Many farmers are struggling to buy and apply chemicals to their crops. These pesticides are expensive, but the impacts cannot match traditional methods which are cheap and locally available. The Farming Early Warning Systems Network, which issues alarms about food shortages, said in its February report that drought and the pest infestation will reduce maize harvest by 10% in the 2017-2018 October to April season. Malawi's maize production in 2016-2017 farming season stood at 3.2 million tons. Despite Nigeria's boycott of Africa's Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, some investors are optimistic that Africa trade integration will be realized to the fullest someday. This view was shared at the West Africa Trade and Investment Forum ongoing in Lagos, Nigeria, with a focus on manufacturing, ICT, education and agriculture. We are optimistic that genuine efforts 